Manchester United have finally sucked Eric Ten Hag. They also officially announced his replacement. One of the world's best upcoming managers, Ruben Amorim, is coming in as the new head coach at Theatre of Dreams. With his unique style and bright ideas, he won Primera Liga twice with Sporting. But the question is, can he bring the glory days back to Old Trafford? In today's rebuild, I am going to fix Manchester United as Ruben Amorim, with the objective to win the Premier League and the Champions League. Here is the Manchester United team in the beginning of the first season. And because transfer window is closed till January, we are going to stick with this team. Of course, we have a world-class center attacking midfielder, a playmaker Bruno Fernandes, two highly reliable center backs in Delict and Martinez, and upcoming future stars like Alejandro Garnacho and Kobe Mainu in our starting 11. However, this team does not look as a title contender in the Premier League. And the only thing that we are going to do to have some impact on this team is going to be hiring of best available coaches until we are eligible to make some transfers. We are also going to work on the development plans of our players. We simulated till January 2025 and the transfer window is officially open. And we are going to sign two players this transfer window. Two backup players for center attacking midfielder position and center back position. Starting with Abi Reggie from Crystal Palace. And for 43 million euros we brought him in. He's coming in as an 82 rated center attacking midfielder, center midfielder or left winger. He does have great play styles and can be a quality backup for Bruno Fernandes. We are also going to sign a player who has been linked to a lot of great clubs already. At the age of 22, Jared Brentfate from Everton is going to be our next target. We managed to sign him for 38 million euros from Everton. He is currently 79 rated with good pace, defending and physical capabilities on him. And he does have slight tackle and aerial playstyles. These two transfers are just the beginning of a huge rebuild that is going to happen in the beginning of the second season. But for now, we are going to simulate till the end of the season and hopefully we are going to end it in the Champions League spot. And we were extremely close, only 3 points gap between us and Arsenal, but we ended up season in the 5th position. And one of our two bitter rivals, Liverpool, won the league. We even lost the FA Community Shield to Manchester City in the beginning of the season. Emirates FA Cup goes to City as well. And in the Europa League, we made it to the final, where we again lost to Athletic Bilbao. To be honest, this was a tough season. And in terms of stats, it was actually Bruno Fernandes with 33 goals and 9 assists from Cam Spot. He is definitely our best player. And look at his stats in the Europa League. He managed to score 13 times in 15 games. Taking home the top scorer award in the Europa League. We end the season with almost 88 million euros untouched budget. And last but not least, we are going to say goodbye to 5 players including Christian Eriksen and Victor Lindelof. We are starting the second season in Manchester United by adapting our tactical vision to what Ruben Amarim has been using in Sporting. Previous managers in Manchester United have failed to deliver with four at the back systems. Now we are switching from four at the back to three at the back. We are going to use 3-4-2-1 formation, short passing build-up style and high defensive approach. This is our current lineup with new formation. We are about to make a massive team cleanup, sell a lot of players but before all of that we got a pretty solid budget of almost 160 million euros so I think we can do good business this season. After one of the biggest clearouts in Manchester United history we managed to accumulate more than 360 million euros to spend on new signings. We are starting from a goalkeeper position and we are going big for Diogo Costa and for 72 million euros we secured his transfer from Porto to Manchester. He has the same rating as Andre Onana but he is four years younger and has high potential so we are going to sell Onana as well. Bayern there will be our backup goalkeeper for this season. Next up we are going to sign a player Manchester United was trying to sign for a very long time. We had to spend 100 million euros to sign Frankie de Jong from Barcelona. Although Eric Tenag is not here anymore, but I believe he will suit our system perfectly. He is coming in as a joint highest rated player in our team. With Truvella plus a lot of base playstyles and a huge experience to lead our midfield. 
next player that we are going to sign is from another Spanish giant. And for 52 million euros, we managed to sign Brahim Diaz from Real Madrid. He is currently 83 rated as well as Abed Echieze. And these two will share the playtime for the second center attacking midfielder position in our starting 11. Last but not least, we are going to sign Federico Di Marco from Inter. And we finalized his deal, paying 61 million euros for a four year deal. Federico Di Marco is coming in as an 85 rated left back or a left midfielder with six play styles on him. We are going to convert Diogo Dallo from right back to right midfielder and now he is 85 rated in his new position. This is a final lineup after the massive rebuild in Manchester United. Delict and Martinez has their guaranteed spot in a first 11. Brent Waite and Lenny Euro are going to fight for the third spot. Frankie de Jong will be the main guy in the center of the park alongside Kobe Maino. Our two white players, both Diogo Dallo and Federico Di Marco are very well rounded and can both both attack and defend. Currently I am working to convert Alejandro Garnacho to become a center attacking midfielder. But before that we are going to convert Kobe Mainu from center defensive midfielder to a center midfielder. He is going to take a box to box role in our team. Of course the captain and the leader of the team is Bruno Fernandes. And up front we have Rasmus Hoyland competing with Xerxes for a striker position. This is us done with the transfer business for the second season. We still have 37 million euros untouched budget for this season that we are going to spend on contract renewals. So let's simulate this season and see whether we can win the Premier League with this new updated squad. And again, we are only 5th in the Premier League, 6 points behind Liverpool. But this time, we were better than our city rivals. They ended up the season on the 7th position and a surprise winner is Chelsea. However, Manchester City have won the FA Cup as well as Carabao Cup. But instead, we finally won our first trophy as the head coach of Manchester United, beating Juventus in the Europa League final. And in terms of stats, it was again Bruno Fernandes, 28 goals and 14 assists to his name. This Recent campaign from Rasmus Hoyland. He is already 87 rated and he got himself 26 goals and 6 assists. Ebede Chiese, Garnacho, and Brahim had pretty similar stats, Garnacho being the most productive of them all. In terms of growth, it was a good season as well. The lowest rated player right now in the team is Kobe Maino. We even have Ugarte, 86 rated center defensive midfielder on the bench, Garnacho, 85 rated as well. We got a pretty decent team and next season we are going to strengthen it even more. But before that we are going to say goodbye to 5 players and Casemiro is one of them. We are starting season 3 with almost 167 million euros in the budget. And first position that we are going to strengthen is the right midfielder position. And for that we spent 96 million euros to sign Jeremy Frimpong. One of the fastest midfielders in the world with rapid, flair and quick step play styles. He is currently 25 years old and is already 86 rated. He is the only world class player that we are going to sign this transfer window. Remaining 60 million euros we are going to spend to strengthen our bench. We started from defense by signing American center back Cameron Carter Wickers from Bournemouth. We paid 26 million euros for 81 rated center back. He will definitely be a good backup for our center backs. Last but not least, for 23.5 million euros, we signed young, talented Englishman from Newcastle, Lewis Malley, a 20 years old center midfielder, already 77 rated, with zero play styles. This is our official lineup for season 3. Hopefully, this team is able to compete both in the Premier League and in the Champions League. We made it to the end of the third season and this time we are the champions of the Premier League. 90 points to our name and the first major trophy for Man United. Emirates FA Cup goes to Spurs and we also won the Carabao Cup so the treble is on the line. But in the Champions League we sadly lost to Inter Milan in the semi-finals 4-3 on aggregate. And in terms of goal contributions this was a hell of a season from Rasmus Hoyland, Bruno Fernandes, Ebede Chiese and Alejandro. Alejandro Garnacho. Incredible numbers from our attacking players. So I hope next season will be the one for us to win the Champions League.
we are in the beginning of the fourth season and after contract renewals we are left with 176 million euros from initial 252 million euros budget and unfortunately we are going to sign a world-class midfielder because Kobe Mainu is only 83 rated and he stagnated in his development although he did not reach his initial potential we do have also Ugarte in this position but he is not developing as well and that's why we are going to bring in another Portuguese player Joao Neves from PSG and for astronomical 101 million euros we signed him he is only 22 years old 86 rated already and he is going to be a box-to-box -box midfielder in our starting 11 and just look at these stats every stat is above 80 rating and on top of that he has long ball pass tiki taka press proven and relentless play styles after the transfer of Joao Neves we are left with 65 million euros in the bank and we are going to spend that money to sign a backup for Federico Di Marco. In the end I decided to go with Jacob Ramsey. We paid 40 million euros to Aston Villa for his transfer. He is coming in as a 82 rated left midfielder, center midfielder or right midfielder with great attacking and defending capabilities. After only two signings we are done with transfers. I believe this team is very well balanced and we also had a lot of talented players on the bench as well. So let's simulate this season and hopefully we can win the Champions League in the end. Unfortunately we did not manage to win the Premier League back-to-back -back seasons. This time we are only third with 76 points. Manchester City won it and a surprise finish from West Ham. We did manage to bottle FA Community Shield losing it to Tottenham Hotspur. The Emirates FA Cup goes to Liverpool but on the contrary in the Champions League we were absolutely brilliant. First in the league table. In the round of 16 we beat Atletico de Madrid 4-2 on aggregate. In the quarterfinals we were better than Ajax and in the semis we managed to eliminate Paris Saint-Germain to face the Champions League kings themselves Real Madrid in the final. Alejandro Garnacho had a brilliant season with 27 goals and 7 assists but sadly he is injured for the final game as well as Brahim Diaz. Hjoilun, Fernandes and Eze had a decent season as well. This Real Madrid team is absolutely brilliant having Vinny Jr, Mbappe, Bellingham, Luis Diaz, Chouameni, Courtois. What a fantastic team it is. But we also got a world class team with 91 rated Hoyland and Fernandes up top. Sadly we can't use Garnacho in his final. But Eberechi Eze is a world class as well. And even on a bench we got pretty high rated players. I believe we are good enough to win this Champions League final. But you never know when your opponent is Real Madrid. As expected, Real Madrid started the game aggressively and nearly opened the score with their first attack. But already in the 10th minute, we got lucky from a corner kick. Matias Delict put the ball into the net after a brilliant delivery. We could have doubled our lead in the 29th minute when Rasmus Hoyland decided to go with Van Persie-esque header, but he aimed it terribly. Real Madrid continued to attack hard in the second half as well. They had a couple of brilliant goal scoring opportunities and eventually in the 76th minute they managed to find the equalizer. Luis Diaz with a header from a corner kick. There were no other goals to separate the teams and it was time for a penalty shootout where our goalkeeper Diogo Costa parried first two shots from Real Madrid giving us a comfortable lead in the shootout. Although Jude Bellingham and Vinicius Jr were perfect from the spot but Federico Di Marco with our fourth shot win the UCL title for Manchester United. Real Madrid was better on the pitch but we somehow managed to win this title. If you enjoyed this video click here to watch me fix Schalke in FC25.